Hello and welcome, coming to you once again, not quite live, from One Take Studios, where today's topic is sets and set theory. Ladies and gentlemen, this is just an introduction to a topic. I once took an entire semester college course on this, and so obviously I'm not going to boil everything down into just a couple minutes. But this will get you the basics, get you going, and get you so that you can actually read some of the notation. So let's start with some vocabulary. Uh, we've got a set. What is a set? It is a collection of objects. In this case, we are collecting numbers, but why call them numbers when we can call them something else? <laughs> Elements, again, is another name of the items that are in a set. So rather than saying I've got five numbers in my set, I'm going to say there are five elements in my set. Makes me sound intelligent that way. Set notation is something along these lines. We'll have a capital letter to indicate a set, a specific set of numbers, uh, based on what I currently have written. Actually, I think I wanted to have an equal sign here. That makes more sense. This set of numbers specifically contains three elements, and those are one, two, three. I can tell because it says one, two, three, there's commas between them, and I have my set notation brackets. Those are the kind of funky, squiggly ones that are on both sides. If you can't draw them very well, practice. Turn your paper sideways and draw seagulls. It'll work, I promise. All right, so that's set notation, capital letters, and then the funny bracket things. All right, finite set. There are two types of sets. The first one is finite. Finite is the number of elements in the set is a natural number. Uh, the words natural numbers has fallen out of use a little bit. Those, your natural numbers are your counting numbers. So in other words, if I can count how many numbers are in the set, it's a finite set. This set has three elements. It is finite. So what does that mean for contrast? Well, if it's not finite, then it's infinite. And literally, that's often our definition. It's just that it's not finite. So in other words, it's going to be not countable. <coughs> what might that look like? Um, maybe it's something like this, where, again, I'm just going to go with this. Um, I'm going to go with C, a capital C. And I'm going to put one, comma, two, comma, three, comma. And then notice I'm going to put my dot, dot, dot after the comma. That's the, the way that that's supposed to be written. And close my brackets. What have I just done? I've just given you the set of countable numbers in set notation. Again, I'm just reiterating, drawing over top of these lines to make them a little bit more bold for you to see a little bit better. But that's the idea. I can't count how many are in the set because of the dot dot dot, because it keeps going forever and ever. I know which numbers are in the set, I simply cannot list them all. And so this is going to be an infinite set. So finite set, infinite set. All right, set builder notation is something that can be interesting as well. Uh, sometimes it's simply easier to describe a set than it is to try to list the things that are in it. <coughs> so for example, um, S could be the set of numbers. Ooh, that looks weird. But some of you have seen me work with this before. This is a down slash. It's not any operational symbol. But this is the set of numbers X such that x is odd. So rather than trying to find ways to list all of the odd numbers, I say my set of numbers are x's such that, that's the line, such that x is odd. Which means I now know that 5 is in this set, and negative 25 is in this set, and 13 is in this set. By describing them, I can use set builder notation sometimes more easily than trying to use one of my other types of sets. All right. So there's some basic information to get us started there. Let's take a look at what's next, shall we? All right. Oh, there we go. <coughs> U, that's the capital letter U, is known as the universal set. It contains all elements. So if you see U, you don't have to wonder, gee, which numbers are going to be in that set? All numbers, all elements are in the set U. This is interesting. All right, so this right thing, th this is a symbol. It's kind of like an E, but it's curved, so it's a, in some cases sort of like a C, but with the line through the middle of it there. That means is an element of. So, hold on one second, I'm getting a drink. This is what I want to use for talking about individual things. So if I look at what I've got over here, I might say that based on some of my other sets that I've got going on here, I would say that 2 is an element of, is a member of, and hey, let's use u, because u is the set of all numbers. So I'm saying that 2 is an element of, 2 is a member of, the set that contains everything. Well, that's logical, because u contains everything, so naturally 2 would be part of that. However, if I want to talk about 2 and its membership with 
this set, set S, which says that everything, all of my x's are odd, 2 is not an odd number, so I still want to make the e thing, but again, I want to kind of cross it off in saying that 2 is not a member of set S. So 2 is in the universal set, it's part of the, it contains all numbers, but 2 is not in the set of odd numbers, so it is not an element of just going to slice it down the middle, just like you would say not equals. All right, so again, just symbols and knowing what they mean is always helpful. Um, I don't know how many of you guys are familiar with Venn diagrams. They are useful. And I'd like to take a look at more symbols and draw you pictures then to go with it. So again, the U, if you notice in the corner, this rectangle of the box represents all elements. So every number in existence is within that box. This is set A. I probably should put the A inside, but I didn't. So this right here, this circle contains all the numbers that are in set A, and this circle right here contains all the numbers that are in set B. So what does this mean? The U right here, it's kind of like a U, technically it's a symbol. I like to think of it as a U because I like to think of the word union. Union, unite, pulling everything together. If I see A union B, I'm going to unite everything in A and B. So that means it's going to include, this, this new set is going to be a mix of these two. It's going to include everything in A and everything in B. So now all of the elements that were in either set are combined into one large new group as I unite them together. As opposed to, if I've got an upside down U thing, which is actually intersection. All right, so this is the intersection of sets C and D. And this is going to be not uniting everything, just saying, hey, where do they cross each other? Well, again, if this is union, union, hello, sorry, that's the universal set. The universal set has all of my numbers. Here's everything for set C. Here's everything for set D. Where do they intersect? I'm looking for just the numbers that intersect. That's going to be only these guys here in the middle, because every number in that zone is a member of C and D at the same time. That's my intersection. All right, so let's put this with some actual numbers and see if we can kind of pull together any loose ends that might be in your brain. Uh, so we got a couple things here. All right, so sets. Um, these are three sets of numbers that I set up. So set A, set B, set C. I have listed them for you. These are all finite sets, you can tell, because none of them continues forever and ever. And I want to look at that in light of some of our new notation here with the union and the intersection. So if I'm looking at A union B, A union B, I want to unite, put together everything from A and B. Well, that means what? It means when I put this together, I'm going to list, whoops, wow, my brain, there we go, there we go, I can do this. <laughs> I'm going to have a one and the 2 is included, that's in the other set, and 3 is going to be part of this, and so is 4, and oh wait, yeah, so is 5, and 6, and 7. In other words, any number that was in either set A or B, they've all been united together. Do I have to have them in order? Technically, no, but I like to, that's just me. All right, and that's it, we're just uniting all of them, we're putting all of them together. It's kind of like a salad bowl, you're going to throw them all in there. What if I do the same thing with B and C. So here's set B, here's set C. What if I unite these two? What if I go with the union here? Well, I don't need to do all of the duplicates. 2 is in there. 4 is in both sets. All I need to do is list 4. And then I know, hey, it's in one or the other. But in this case, it happens to be in both. And the same thing with the 6. It occurs in both places. I just need to list it once. So this is the set of numbers B, union, C, where we've just combined everything from these two sets together. All right, what does that mean for maybe some intersection stuff? What if I have the intersection of A and B? So here's A, here's B. If I think about this in terms of a Venn diagram, where do these two overlap? Oh, that's right. They don't. There isn't a single number that's in set A and set B at the same time. How do I write that there's nothing? That's going to look like the circle O thing with a slash through it. This is officially known as the empty set. Empty set. In other words, this set of numbers has nothing in it. There is no number that's both in set A and B at the same time. Therefore, there is no intersection between the two. So if I'm doing a Venn diagram, these two circles, first A and B, those two sets don't overlap at all. They would be completely separate from each other. 
uh, what if I try to do B intersect C? Um, oh, well, this is going to work a little bit better because I'm saying, all right, so what is in both B and C at the same time? They both have a 4 and they both have a 6. And so that is the intersection of B and C because those numbers appear in both sets. All right, so hopefully that demystifies some of the crazy uh, symbols that you see with this stuff. But that's it. That's just a basic introduction. Again, it gets more complicated, but you got to start someplace, okay? So have some fun with that.